Good evening, my dear friends, and welcome to our Sunday night vigil dedicated for global peace and interspiritual unity within the global village, the Cathedral of God. And I welcome you, whoever you are, wherever you may be, to this time of being still in the presence of divine love. And we light this light to symbolize a blessing, a blessing of God on the whole family of God. We light this light in the name of our beloved Father, Mother, God, who creates life in the name of the Spirit, who is the fire of life, in the name of the cosmic Christ, who loves life, in the name of spiritual diversity, all faiths and none, for they are the children of the same God. And on behalf of all my brothers and sisters of the Teo community of St. Francis, I, Brother Sean, welcome you to this time of reflection and stillness here at our little monastery in the South Lakes of the United Kingdom. Let us be still and experience the art of blessing. Relax now. And with each breath you breathe in to your sacred being, breathe in the breath of God. And in your out breaths, release any tension or fear, sadness, anxiety, or despair. And just go with the rhythm of your breathing as you reawaken your heart to the divine within you. You were formed in your mother's womb as a child of love, a child of God. Just reflect on that, that you were created for a purpose. Experience the love of the angelic realm as they join us now in this sacred oasis. Be still. Be still and know that you are loved. Relax. I'm going to read to you, if I may, a portion of the beautiful book by the late John O'Donoghue to bless the space between us. And the section I shall read is titled The Inner Friends of the Heart. It is such a privilege to have people who continue each day to bless us with their love and prayer. These inner friends of the heart confer on us inestimable gifts. And in these times of greed and externality, there is such unusual beauty in having friends who practice profound faithfulness to us. Praying for us each day without ever knowing or remembering it. 
there are often lonesome frontiers we could never endure or cross without the inner sheltering of these friends. It is hard to live a true life that endeavors to be faithful to its own calling and not become haunted by the ghosts of negativity. Therefore, it is not a luxury to have such friends. It is necessary. I have always loved the shy beauty of country people who have quietly made their lives sacred. Their presence has the feel of unaffected authenticity. Theirs is a spirituality that draws no attention to itself. It is more beautiful than the most institutional religious decorum or studied spirituality. These people have often lived through great difficulty, but their quiet and subtle lives never saw any need for brash declarations of spirit. Rather, they exhibited the shyness that is natural to the soul itself. Much modern spirituality and psychology is full of loneliness. Much of it is the fruit of emptiness. It has not grown naturally from minds conversant with the eros of the earth. It lacks the rhythm and belonging of a true ecology of the heart. It has a hunger at its core that inevitably breeds narcissism and the mechanics of relentless self-observation. Whereas the spirituality of country people seems always to issue from a sense of belonging to a deeper, more ultimate order. They see life as an act of creative service and the world as a call to full participation. Theirs is a lifestyle infused with blessings. There are blessings for putting down the fire in the morning, blessings before and after meals, blessings for the start of work, blessings for the persons who meet you, blessings for the gifts a day brought, blessings of acceptance for the untoward elements that arrived. Blessings for health, journey, animals, of what is now called mindfulness. But blessings also for the dead, and this wave of blessings is a constant activity of what is now called mindfulness, a recognition of the miracle of being here, on the constant shoreline of pure arrival. These blessings are also an acceptance of the transitory and terminal nature of all gifts that have arrived. They need not have come. It is also recognition that the spaces of home and lamps landscape are the apertures through which divinity emerges to enfold us. The spirituality of the rural mind does not see time as routine or treadmill. 
Time is a far more precious space where crevices open to the infinite and where the rhythm of the eternal is felt to preside. Reflect on those words. Embrace those words. And just visualize yourself here with me in our monastery garden, where nature is welcoming you into the sacredness of space where time is irrelevant, where the beauty of God is made manifest in everything that lives, that moves, that breathes, for it has its existence from God. As you sit here and relax, be mindful that you were invited here by Mother Earth. Embrace her love and allow her energies be released into your being through your feet. And now would be a good time to kick off your shoes or sandals and to place your bare feet on terra firma. And as you feel the earth under your feet, you become aware of a healing presence, an energy that goes back eons of time, that gives life to every living thing that nurtures and sustains all life, both animal, vegetable, mineral, and human. Mankind owes a debt of gratitude to the earth. As a Franciscan, I call it the Cathedral of God, for it is here that I embrace God, not in a building, lofty, ornate, but in the simplicity of space, where the birds singing their praises are the choristers in the Cathedral of God, where the insects and the animals are the congregation busy providing food and nourishment for mankind. Let us reflect on the beautiful gifts that we receive each day, gifts that so often we take for granted. For example, the air that we breathe how many times have you breathed in in the last five minutes or exhaled in the last minute? What sounds do you hear? How does it feel to experience the impact of the rays of Brother Sun and Sister Moon on your delicate skin. And what about your sense of sight, the beauty of creation, the waterfalls, the rainbows, the mountains, lakes, rivers and seas, all are given as a gift from God to you and me, to lead us to God and not to lead us away from God. 
but we live, yes, in a beautiful world where everything shared is freely given. But there are those who abuse it through greed, a lack of mindfulness, where their motives are self-centered, egotistically driven with a balance sheet to record their riches, thus denying the whole family of God from the richness of God's free gift to the world. Just sit now for a while and allow nature bless you. Allow nature provide for you. And all that is asked of you is that you surrender your heart to the divine. That you come as you are in your brokenness or wholeness. And that you honour the divine within your being and all around you. And Jesus said to his disciples, Come to me, all you who are weary and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. And as you relax, you're aware of the rhythm of nature. You are aware. of the beauty of creation offered to you and me each waking moment of our life. Open your arms and allow the divine present to you the gift of life, a life devoid of fear, of stress, anxiety, tension, depression. And all you have to do is to ask, is to ask the Father, Mother, God to provide for you a way forward through the maze of discontent, maybe unhappiness, and trust your heart for it is the gateway to your soul, the gateway to your God. Just experience the love of Mother Earth for you, the love of your personal guardian angel assigned to you the moment you were conceived in your mom's womb. Be mindful that you are a child of God. Just sit and embrace the peace, the serenity, the calmness of this monastery garden. And all around you is love. unconditional love and it's knocking on the door of your heart waiting for you to say come in the choice is yours you can receive it or reject it and what's so interesting and humbling is that God 
will not think any more less of you for refusing his love, but will go on loving you because you are a child of God made in the image and likeness of God himself. How does that feel? What is that saying to your heart right now? Well, now I'm going to share with you a personal message channeled by the Cosmic Christ for you. And it reads, Seek my face and you will find all that you have longed for. The deepest yearnings of your heart are for intimacy with me. I know because I designed you to desire me. Do not feel guilty about taking time to be still in my presence. You are simply responding to the tugs of divinity within you. I made you in my image and I hid heaven in your heart. Your yearning for me is a form of homesickness, longing for your true home in heaven. Do not be afraid to be different from other people. The path I have called you to travel is exquisitely right for you. The more closely you follow my leading, the more fully I can develop your gifts. To follow me wholeheartedly, you must relinquish your desire to please other people. However, your closeness to me will bless others by enabling you to shine brightly in this dark world. Relax now. And as you sit in our monastery garden with the gentle breeze blowing through the trees, you can hear the most exquisite sounds that the angel of air is creating for you. It's a music for the soul. And in the silence, you sense the Christ calling you home. Come, allow me set you free. Allow me to touch you now and to bless you with an ancient blessing that will affirm you that you are a beloved of a loving God. But the choice is yours. And you must use your responsibility and accountability for the gifts that are offered. For everything given is given on loan. It is given freely, and there is no hidden agenda. So let us be still. Be still. And allow the spirit of the four winds, the spirit of our forefathers, come and assist you to receive a blessing of the ancients and welcome you 
into this sacred oasis, your heart. Relax now. is with you and that nothing will harm you unless you allow it. So breathe on us, O breath of God, fill us with life in you that we may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Here I am, Lord God. I come in my vulnerability, offering you my availability for peace. And that all your children, regardless of their belief, regardless of their lifestyle choices, will surrender their heart to your love. Be at peace. Be at peace. And with each and every in-breath that you take in right now, slowly, slowly, you are incarnating as God's peace. You are becoming the gift of peace. Become that peace. Become that kingdom builder that God needs to touch hearts who are trapped in guilt, in fear, in vengeance. Share that peace, O oh, beloved child of God. vigil to a close by saying thank you Father Mother God for all that you provide for me for the air that I breathe for the food that you provide on my table for the sun the moon and the stars for my family and friends for the animal kingdom that bring us so much love, for the elements, the seasons, for the gift of blessing, and not taking anything for granted, but honouring the divine in the simple things. Good night and God bless you. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Paxit Bonam, Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of your God set you free.